Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode seven of the EC Leader Show. Today, we're going to be talking about the three part framework for giving feedback. Um, as always, I got my little sidekick here with us. And as you're coming in, say hello in the chat box and let me know what is your biggest fear or hesitation when it comes to giving teachers feedback after a class observation um, or in general. Well, just after you're talking to them about something you need to give them feedback what is your biggest fear about giving feedback so let me know in the comment section um, and while we do that we're going to see who's here all right let's see who is in the house um, Let's see. I know that people are on. Um, you need to say hi so that I know that you're here. Um, so again, welcome everyone. Say hello in the comments and let me know your biggest fear about giving feedback to teachers. Hey, Michelle. Um, the fallout after the talk. Okay, you're nervous about that. Hey, Stephanie. Good evening. Nice to see you. Hello, Barb. Got some of my friends in the house. Always great to see everyone. All right. Sure, 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 sure. Let's see if our little guy will behave today. All right. Hi, Sarah. How are you? All right. We'll give one more minute here for people to come on in, and then I'm going to get started. I think you're spitting up all over me. Uh, okay. All right. Hey, Nicole. Uh, biggest fear, the fallout. Uh, they love the compliments. It's the flip side that's problematic. Hi, Barbara. Um, okay, great. So we're going to be talking about um, the three-part framework for giving feedback after a class observation. Fortunately, Nicole, tomorrow we're releasing in the Inner Circle um, the training on how to conduct a class observation and then how to give follow-up and accountability and everything else that comes along with that. So you're all set. You're joining here for the pregame, um, but you get the real, you get the main course. Tonight's the appetizer. You get the main course tomorrow at 9. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, all right, so let's dig in. So the first thing when you are giving feedback, and we're talking specifically after class observation, is um, – the first piece before we even get to the three-part framework is to understand that when you're doing an observation, you need to have a very specific focus. And I talk about this in greater depth in the inner circle um, in understanding what it is that you're observing, why you're observing in the classroom, and what's your end game? Like, what's that result that you're really going after? Because when you're going to be observing a teacher, when you're going to be having any kind of conversation on feedback, you have to know what that end game looks like. Um, if not, the teacher feels your insecurity or that you're kind of just coming to unload yourself. And whenever you're coming to just just share for the sake of sharing or just unburdening because you're like, oh, I really need to tell her this, but there's no real reason, the teacher feels that. So super important just to make sure that you're like centered on that. But that's like a separate piece. So step number one in the framework to give feedback is you have to give specific praise, okay? So you guys are all familiar with, you know, the sandwich effect when you're talking to parents about, um, you know, the compliment and then the specific thing that the child needs to work on and then, you know, ending with a compliment or an anecdote or a story. When you're talking to a teacher, you're following a similar framework, you're just taking a different angle, okay? Hi, Crystal. Hi, Brenda. Um, so the first step is, is two very specific um, pieces of praise in relation to what you observe. So for example, I'm going to go with the circle time example, okay? So let's say you came into the teacher's classroom and you observed her circle time, okay? While you're observing a circle time and you're seeing that, oh my God, this is wrong and this is not good and this is not good, you need to make sure that you're taking very specific note on what, on what she is doing well at the circle, 
Okay, so you're not just going to start off by saying, um, your circle time was great, the kids loved it, um, you know, it was really engaging, it was a lot of fun. No, 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 it's all lame, 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 lame. Don't say any of that, okay? You're going to be really specific about your praise. So if you're doing circle time, you're going to say something like, you know, I noticed that the children were all seated, um, you know, in a half a circle, and um, I saw that, you know, the last time that I observed, I noticed that you moved Benji to sit next to you. And that was really great, really strategic. He was focused so much better. So, you know, amazing job on that. I just wanted to tell you. Um, and another thing that I realized is that you and your co-teacher were working super in sync during the circle. Um, you know, your co-teacher just really had like one of her eyes on the circle the whole time. And you guys were just able to communicate with your eyes. And, you know, if you needed her help and it wasn't disruptive, like it was really great. And I just want to let you know that, um, I just felt that the circle like ran really smoothly because you guys were really in sync with each other. Okay. That is a compliment. Okay. So let me know in the comment section, if you see the difference between that and saying, Oh, your circle time was really smooth. Okay. What is the difference? Let's, let's just put that out in the open first. What is the difference in being articulate about why her circle was smooth and just saying, Oh, your circle was so smooth. So let me know in the comment section. Okay. Hi, Susan. Specific details prove that you were paying attention to the details that mattered. Nailed it. That's exactly what it is. Because when you're going to go into the specific things that you want corrected, you have to show her that you were also really paying attention to what she was doing really well. It's not just that specifics are better. Specifics work. Okay. The directors that take the time to be specific about their praise will always see better results and relationships with their teachers, period, because you're not being generic and relationships are everything when it comes to the foundation of trust and building a collaborative culture and building a school of excellence and everything that comes along with that. Okay. So that's step number one in the framework two specific compliments, praise, in relation to what you're observing. So you're not just giving her compliments. You're not just saying, you know, your hair looks really great today and that, you know, that blue dress really brings out your eyes, okay? No, those are great compliments. You could do that when you check in in the morning and say hi, but when you're doing that framework, it's two compliments that are very much specific to what you observed. The second thing is, is that you're going to explain what the agenda is. Super important to let the teacher know what the expectation of the meeting is. Okay, so let's take this back to the kids for a second. Every classroom should have a schedule of the day, a visual schedule, so the kids know what the like what's going to be happening today, right? What the schedule is. And the reason that we do that is, is, is excuse me, it creates a, a sense of trust, of ownership of the classroom, and children know what to expect, okay? When you're having a meeting with a teacher, it's the exact same thing. You need to lay out what the agenda is. Um, and so in the inner circle, we actually talk about, you know, what the agenda is, how to lay it out, what's step one, step two, step three. Um, so for the, the second part of the framework is make sure that you're really explaining, excuse me, what that agenda actually is. The third part of the framework is after, you know, you've gone through the praise, you've told her what the agenda is. Um, the third part is talking about what the, um, comparing it to the standards. Okay. So when you're running a school and when you're, you know, you're building a school, whatever it is, you need to have standards about everything that goes on in your school. And we talk about that extensively, um, in the inner circle at our live event that's coming up in June. Um, we talk about what standards are all about. And one of the things is that you need to have standards for what circle time or meeting time or group time or whatever you call it, what that looks like in your school. So for example, I'll just give you an example of like how that would work if you're having the meeting with feedback. So you would say something like, you know, the standard in our school is that children need to be engaged during the circle time. Okay. That's one of our standards. Um, and a substandard of children engage is 
engaged children means that the children are participating in the discussion, they are touching hands-on materials that you've brought in, um, they are, you know, there's a back and forth dialogue exchange, um, that means that the children are engaged, okay? That's what the standard is. And so you tell the teacher, you know, the standard in our school is this. What I noticed in, our observ in the observation of your circle time was, you know, you were really well prepared and you were giving over a great lesson you were talking at the kids. It was more of like a Broadway musical that you were putting on, like a show for the kids. Um, and I didn't see engagement. Like the kids were very passively taking in your information. And the standard in our school is that the children need to be engaged at the circle, which means that there's a back and forth dialogue of conversation. There are questions. There's hands-on manipulatives that the kids are allowed to touch. So now let's talk about how we can, you know, tweak the circle time to match up with the standard. And so what you're having now is this is built-in accountability automatically because now you have something to measure up against, right? So now you're telling the teacher, you know, this is what I saw and this is the actual standard. This is what you actually need to hold up to, okay? So let me know in the comments if that makes sense so far. I'm seeing lots of love and hearts. Makes sense. Awesome. Okay. Great. So, awesome. Yeah. So, again, when you're comparing it to a standard, you have that automatic built in accountability that comes along with that. Just, it, it just, it's part of that. So, number one of the framework is giving specific praise. Number two is laying out the agenda and understanding, you know, what that agenda actually is. Number three is comparing it to the standard. And then there's other parts of the framework, um, which we dig in, into the inner circle and other um, in the live event that's coming up on how to hold the teacher accountable to that and how to lay out the action plan. Because it's not enough to tell the teacher, okay, you need to have visuals. Well, what is a visual? What does it look like? What's developmentally appropriate? You know, How does that actually all tie in together and work out together? Um, so one of the things that we're going to be doing, I know a lot of people that are here live are already part of our inner circle and going to be coming to our live event in June, which is going to be coming up. Um, for those of you that are not and are interested in that and are interested in knowing some more of the framework, understanding how to really, what you're really supposed to observe when you're coming into a classroom, what the agenda has to be, how to structure that meeting, what to say, the scripts, um, the, just everything that's involved when it comes to that. Um, then leave a comment here that says interested so I can follow up with you and can schedule a time to chat together. Um, and now I'm gonna go into some of the questions that we have here. Um, Nicole says we should, um, should a school have a standard for every single time aspect of the day? Yes, um, um, a school definitely needs to have a standard. So again, like you don't wanna get carried away with like, you know, every single thing, but there needs to be a standard with like, this is the standard of, you know, how we return calls in our school. Like if a parent calls you, the standard is that the call should be returned within 24 hours. Um, the standard in our school is that circle time needs to, you know, X, Y, and Z. The standard in our school needs to be that, you know, when you're going outside, into the playground, the lights need to be turned off, the air conditioning needs to be turned off, the door needs to be closed, and I don't know, and something else. Like, like there needs to be a standard for things, because if not, the director just constantly gets frustrated that, oh my God, they didn't turn off the air conditioning again. Oh my God, they forgot to turn off the lights. It's burning the electricity. The bill is through the roof. Like, okay, well, tell them what the standard is, right? So it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not about giving them checklists it's about best practice doesn't mean anything to a 19 year old teacher or a 20 year old or a 25 year old right <clears throat> excuse me i swallowed something best practice doesn't mean anything you have to explain to her what best practice means right so again for for those of you that are coming in or those of you that are watching the replay um and you're interested they're learning more of this framework um there's just there's so many other things i'd love to share with you guys that obviously i can't share everything in a facebook live um especially with my little man over here um 
So again, if I'm interested, in, um, so I could private message you. We could set up a time to connect together. Um, so as you're leaving tonight's session, um, let me know in the comments um, what is well. There's a, a lot of things. Again, for those of you that are you know just hearing about this, like all three parts of the framework are new. But let me know what your aha moment is just from listening to this short little. Um, three-part framework or if there's if you have a class observation coming up you're meeting with a teacher um, what is something that you're committed to um, let me know in the comment section yeah yeah Nicole you're gonna love the the, the training that's being released tomorrow I'm really excited actually um, it's a good one um, so you're definitely gonna love that um, okay so again, let me know in the comment section as you're leaving. Um, what is your aha moment? What is your takeaway? What what is your action step? And little Yassi here is waiting to hear what everyone has to say. <laughs> If anyone has a question, by the way, you can ask me also as you're coming out um, if you have a question about the framework. To committed to giving more specific feedback. Awesome. Yes, committing to make it clear. What is the standing of the best practice? Yeah, Crystal, go back. You're part of the inner circle. So go back to the August training that we released on how to create the standard. Um, that will give you a lot of clarity on what to do on that. Uh, Brenda, my ha moment is being specific and making an agenda for the meeting. Awesome. Nicole, I liked what you said about teachers sensing your feelings and insecurities. They do. Yes, they really do. I'm so glad you brought that up, Nicole. They really, really do. And you know what? Everyone has insecurities. I'm not telling you guys not to have any insecurities. That's, you know, everyone has insecurities. Um, but the point is, is that just be conscious of that. So don't come into the meeting unless you're confident with what you're saying and what you're bringing and that you prepared and whatever it is because they sense that. They sense when you're full of bullshit. Um, Stephanie, um, I need to sit down and bulk up on the standards. One of the many projects on my to-do list. <laughs> We're going to be talking on Tuesday, so I'm excited to connect with you on that. We'll, we'll see how to, you know, divide and conquer on that. Awesome, Crystal. Great. Okay, ladies, again, thank you so much for an awesome EC Leader show here in episode seven. Um, if you haven't had a chance to go um, watch the other episodes, we have some incredible ones on filtering distractions, time management, all of that. They're all in the video section, so go back and check them out. Um, some really, really great content and episodes over there. And again, let me know in the comments if you're interested. Just type that, and I will follow up with you. Have a great night, and I will see you guys in the group. All the best. Take care.